Hi, so what I want to talk about today is a brief tutorial on how and why to use the currencies.jl library. I am the lead developer of currencies.jl and um, so today I'll talk about why we might want to use it, the basics of using it, um, exchange features using baskets, so collections of multiple currencies, adding custom currencies, and a few notes on performance. Firstly, uh, why is there a currencies.jl library? Why would we prefer a library to do currencies work instead of just using built-in floating point numbers? Now, the reason is that it's usually a bad idea to store monetary values with floating point numbers. And I should clarify that statement. It's a bad idea unless one makes sure to round properly after each step, or one is certain that exact comparisons will be required. Because binary floating point numbers cannot store many decimal numbers exactly. Really what we want is a decimal fixed point format, but a binary floating point format is only an approximation to that. So an example here is that if we take a price of 1 and 1.1 and then add 0 0.1 to it, we get this interesting result of 1.2000 uh, followed by several other zeros and a 2. And the reason for that is that both 1.1 and 0 0.1 are only approximations. And if we add those approximations, we get an approximation of 1.2 that's a bit bigger than 1.2. And the actual, the, the closest approximation of 1.2 is not the same as that approximation that we obtained. So, yeah, so in this case, we see that the comparison fails, and that might not be behavior that we desire. So there are two ways to fix this problem. One is we could round it to two decimal places, which would convert this approximation of 1.2 to the closest possible approximation of 1.2, which, which would be the desired behavior. And the other is that we could always use inexact comparisons. So you can see that the inexact approximately equal operator returns the correct result. But, you know, these currency objects are really fixed point decimals. So we, we should probably be using a fixed point decimal type and not a floating point binary type. There's two things wrong with that. Even a floating point decimal type or a fixed point uh, or a fixed point binary type would also not be ideal. So we should use a fixed point decimal type, and that's what currencies.jl provides. So to use it, it's actually very simple. Just using currencies, and then use use the using currencies macro. So at using currencies, followed by a comma separated list of currencies to use. So we have here we're using currencies USD and Euro. Uh, the semicolon is not necessary. I'm just using that to suppress the output. So we can do the same computation above. This time we set it to 1.10 US dollars. And notice we use Julia's implicit multiplication here. Uh, this 1.1 is temporarily afloat. So be aware that there is a temporary precision problem. So if you, these numbers are very, very long, uh, if they are, you know, if they are many tens of significant figures long, then we may have some precision problems. But for most use cases, this is perfectly fine. Um, and then we see we do the addition and we do the comparison. And this time our comparison comes out exact. We don't have to use the approximately equal operator. So the type of this thing is actually currencies.monetary, um, a symbol US dollars in 64 and 2. So that means that it's two decimal places, uh, fixed point, stored as an int 64-bit integer. Uh, with two decimal places stored after the fixed point, and the type represents a uh, United States dollar. So the, the currency is actually stored within a type, which, which means if we try to add a uh, value of a different type, so, you know, euros, for example, to our American dollars, we get a method error. And uh, that's desirable because we don't want to add currencies of heterogeneous types unless we, we explicitly say so. Right, and I'll, I'll show later on how to explicitly say so. But all the operations that make sense to do, um, we can do. So we can you know, we can multiply. We can even multiply by a float. But again, with the with the proviso that the floating point binary numbers may not be exact, so they're rounded to um, exact decimal numbers. And if the numbers are long enough, then the rounding might not be perfect. But for the vast majority of numbers, there is no problem. All right, so the currencies.jl library provides built-in integration with Fixerio, which is an API to fetch the latest European Central Bank exchange rates. So you can see here that we all ha well, we have to do is use the ECB rates function, and then it automatically will download exchange rates from the European Central Bank. 
and uh, the, the exchange rates are cached so we can run it again and it will work fine and this is just this exchange rate table is basically just an associative type with additional metadata and we can now use the evaluate function to evaluate a quantity in terms of a different currency using a specific uh, exchange rate table so in this case we use ECB rates but we could in theory provide our own that would work just as well and uh, we can even evaluate in a currency we have not um, explicitly imported right because this is just a symbol so it would work with Canadian dollars or any of the dollars um, supported by the European Central Bank alright so let's look at baskets um, so it, what if we actually want to consider uh, United States dollars and euros together right so we can actually use a data structure there called a static basket and static basket is immutable so it can't change but it acts a bit like a number because we can add it for example to 50 euros and the number of euros goes up right because we've added it so it acts like a number and we can you know subtract 100 United States dollars and now we only have a one currency static basket and we can even compare we can even do comparison with the um, just the scalar type the 100 euros and it will work just well, fine so basically it's a way to add values of different currencies together without having type issues um, and you can see we can, you can we can introduce a new kind of currency and there's no problem there either sometimes we might want to treat these things as collections and not so much as um, as numbers right and that works too and uh, especially if sometimes when we want to treat them as collections we might want to mutate them so there is a dynamic basket that is mute that it can be mutated with the pushbang operation so if we create a dynamic basket and then we use the pushbang operation to add eight US dollars and notice how it's looking a bit like a collection in this situation uh, then the basket object itself is mutated and we can check that uh, we can we can use these and this works with the, the rest of these functionalities work with static baskets as well but we can use them as collections so we can iterate over them and display each value or we can even index them with a symbol to get the currency value of that symbol so all of this functionality is great but it only works on currencies in ISO 4217 or ISO 4217 um, but it's not too difficult to add currencies that we might want for custom use like a, a store currency or a digital currency and the way to do that is with the at using current custom currency macro and then we supply a um, symbol and also a name for the currency and a number of decimal places uh, the default number of decimal places and you can see we get 1.0000 points and that works just fine and we can use these objects like we can with any currencies right and they work just as well as with native currencies we can even add them to baskets so basically custom currencies are supported just as well as currencies in the ISO standard they just have to be added um, yourself now I'll go over quickly a note on the performance um, unfortunately monetary objects are not quite as fast as using integers they, they can be faster than using floating point numbers though and I, I'll show an example of the higher memory overhead and higher um, computation overhead below. So this is a function here to make change for euros and it's the same implementation for integers. Now these integers are all multiplied by 100. They're, they're counting the number of euro cents. If I had used floating point numbers there would be some problems with the uh, divrem calculation. In fact this code as is doesn't work with floating point numbers because um, for example you can only put 11 copies of 0.1 into 1.2 and that's quite surprising but it's because 1.2 is an approximation and so is 0.1 so when you when you look at the actual numbers that they represent you could you can only fit 11 and almost 12 but not quite 0.1s into uh, into 1.2 so this computation itself won't work uh, but it does work for integers representing the number of euro cents and also our monetary value right um, monetary euros and, and we're gonna use two decimal places here um, because the code is already assuming that so we might as well and if we if we you know compile the, uh, if we you know provide these functions and then time this this the first timing of course includes the compilation time so we have to time it again to get a more accurate time and you can see the integer version runs in no time at all with only 2.125 kilobytes of allocations 
in 11 allocations. So that's very, very good. Now, the the uh, monetary version is a bit worse. Um, this is the first compilation, of course. The second compilation, you can see it's uh, twice as slow, so 0. 0.000020 seconds. And it took almost three times, uh, it took uh, almost four times as many allocations and uh, 400 more bytes of memory, more than 400 more bytes of memory. So you can see that these things are not quite as performant as just using ints yet. And hopefully this will improve with later versions of the libraries. But um, as a performance note, when performance and memory usage are very, very important, then it, it might be useful to actually take the currency object and dissect it. And just, for example, take it um, take its value as an integer, right? And then perform operations on those. Uh, so in those situations, in those special cases, which are quite rare, I'd say, um, where the two times overhead actually makes a difference, Currently, the workaround is to just convert the result into an integer. Now, um, so that's all I have in this tutorial. If you are interested in the currencies.jl library, you can head off to GitHub, and uh, there is, there are, some, there is some documentation here. So, um, the read the docs here provide some documentation, and uh, using this documentation. We, you can figure out, you can find out more about the library and how things work. Uh, it, it's, I would say, a bit more in depth than this tutorial has been. So thank you very much uh, for your interest in currencies.jl. If you have any issues, make sure to report them on GitHub as uh, bugs, and uh, that will be it for this tutorial. Thank you.